Welcome everybody to GGW Sharks 27. And uh, since uh, the November last year, we are doing this event uh, almost every week and it's been a success because of the investors and because of the startups that are trying to find each other. And here we connect and uh, it's been amazing so far how uh, viral this story went and so many participate. We already have over 3,500, almost 4,000 people participated uh, uh, so far by this day and I'm really surprised because we never paid any uh, any penny in marketing. It's all your support, it's all organic and I'm really grateful for any of your support because uh, with, that means that we are helping you and your feedback helps us to make this event better. And with that said, we're going to jump right into the uh, pitch in a minute or so. Uh, I'm going to show you the slides as usually we do, and we will present the investors right away. So uh, with that said, let's uh, learn about Google World and why we are doing this. OK, so Google World is the global startup and investor community. But more than that, it's a global matchmaking platform where startups and investors can meet with verified uh, parties and by the criteria. So relevant investors meet relevant startups. We already have 70 approved funds on our platform. It's billions of dollars in assets and uh, many uh, hundreds of startups already on the platform approved and verified. So that means that uh, the connections are happening right now and I encourage everyone to create your startup profile or investor profile so you can connect to each other Startups can and connect with investors, investors can connect with startups, and investors can connect to investors. So why this platform is being uh, popular and uh, so, much, so much organic growth in here? Because uh, you can decide faster. You can see all key information as an investor or, or, or of the startup you're seeing, and you can take a decision fast, either pass or connect. You don't have to dig through the data or everything. So uh, everything you need to see is right in front of your eyes and was verified with many investors what exactly they're looking for. And every startup or anyone who's registered on the platform and approved, they, they go through basic verification from our team and also they offer independent verification. So uh, quality first. Then uh, on the platform, we have a, a matchmaking mecha mechanism where uh, the technology goes complex. I'll show you, uh, I just, I'm showing you just the snapshot of the basic part of our technology, but we connect you by stage, vertical, business model, focus geography. So you can find always most relevant startups as an investor or most relevant investors as a startup. Or if you as an investor looking for uh, connection, investor connections for whatever purposes you have, uh, then you can also use these filters and other filters or a matchmaking mechanism to connect with investors. It's all real people, all verified, and uh, this is the quality connections you uh, probably want to have because the system will not always know your criteria and uh, the system will offer you the most relevant ones uh, first. Then it's not only connections, it's not only network, it's also data. We learn uh, uh, how existing connections or existing network on our platform can lead you uh, in the potential connection or potential future deal for you, uh, uh, that would be also great. But also, we are me measuring what's happening with your own network outside our platform. So you can use your, as an investor or a startup, you can use your profile and share it with startups and where uh, startups will uh, use apply for finding button and the system will automatically uh, decide whether it's a fit to you or not a fit. So you don't have to do this manual screening scoring. The system will do it on your behalf. Uh, and magic happens in there. And you will measure success rate and conversion rate right in there in the system so you can know how uh, valuable is your own network. Um, so with that said, uh, I'm announcing GGW Sharks 27. And uh, with that announcement, uh, we, this is our uh, investor group so far. And I'm super excited to have these notable investors uh, on the panel today. So it's uh, Yuan Liu, uh, Angelica Maroon, Dan Ellis, in uh, uh, hello and Riz uh, Schroeder. Well, uh, I'm gonna let investors to present themselves in a few seconds, uh, but first let's see the rules. The rules are super important to make this event uh, efficient and uh, help everyone to succeed today. And uh, with that said, I want to say that please uh, keep yourself muted all the time except for investors. 
Uh, and uh, this is how you will let others to pitch well without interruptions and uh, the other people also will not interrupt you. So please make sure you don't interrupt others. Raise your hand to pitch. It's a two minute elevator pitch plus questions. We will have a hard stop uh, if you don't uh, meet two minutes. So just be uh, prepared for that. To be selected to pitch, you should have uh, on your Zoom profile first name and last name and your company name. So please rename yourself here in the chat uh, uh if you don't have your first name last name in your company name and uh, you need to keep your video on so my team need to really see the real person behind it so we don't uh, have surprises during the event we need real people to pitch and we need to know beforehand who we letting uh, to pitch uh, uh, here so that's really important and uh, uh with that said uh this is how we will be selecting as well now, it's only for new startups with sales, evidence of IP, and scalable business model. If you are not a startup, please let startups to pitch. And uh, uh, this is how uh, uh, we, are, we expect this uh, event to happen. This is We cannot help traditional businesses. We respect traditional businesses, but this is an event for startups and venture investors. Well, respect time. It's a two hours event maximum, and uh, we cannot do more than two hours. So if you don't let, uh, if you don't make it to the end of the event, we will let you pitch on the other event. And some people who didn't pitch uh, on the previous event, please uh, text me or better my team, Go Global World, here in the chat. Uh, to be uh, put uh, uh, with priority to pitch among the first. Well, uh, GGW members also uh, will pitch first, as usually. So uh, if you're a subscribed member, you will definitely have the priority uh, among others. Uh, if you don't get time to pitch, uh, please email us at info at gogobo.world and we'll let you pitch. And remember, this is a networking event. We also have investors in the chat and every one of you has network uh, to help each other with investors, with potential customers, something like that. But what we don't really uh, uh, want you to do is to sell anything to each other. This is not a sales event. This is a event where one helps the other without asking anything in return. So keep it uh, like that. It's really important for us. And finally, to make this ideal two-minute elevator pitch, uh, this is a simple uh, structure. You may do it differently, but usually what investors are asking. Keep it as a story. Uh, get to the point of what you do uh, as soon as possible. So don't go too, too deep into the problem or something. What you do and why you're unique. Uh, and then discuss the traction. And if you pitched before and you're pitching again, so tell everyone what significantly has changed since you pitched last time. So that's it. Uh, these are the contacts of Google World. I will share the direct link how to create uh, uh, your profile on our platform. That's really important. And after you pitch, please share your GGW profile with investors here in the chat so they can connect you on the platform uh, as well. And uh, if you have any more questions, go on our website, goglobal.world, and uh, email us at info at goglobal.world. That's it. And this is the time when we ask investors to present themselves. Really excited about that. And we will start with Yuan. Yuan, are you ready? So yeah, you muted. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Yuan, I'm an investor from uh, Hypertherm Ventures. We are a corporate venture arm of Hypertherm, which is a global leader in industrial cutting. And my team focused on uh, investing in companies that are leveraging early stage technologies that could make the industrial manufacturing world better next day, tomorrow. So I uh, look forward to getting to know more uh, founders today. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be back. It's been a while. <laughs> Yuan is an experienced shark at GoGoBo World, and we are really excited to have you again with us. Thank you. Uh, Reese, please introduce yourself soon. Hello, I'm Reese Schroeder. Um, I'm an, an investor with Allstate Strategic Ventures, the corporate venture capital arm of Allstate Insurance Company. Um, I've been doing corporate venture capital for about 22 years. Um, with uh, I started uh, my corporate VC career uh, with Motorola and then Motorola Solutions. And then after that, I co-founded Tyson Ventures in the food space before coming back to tech when I joined Allstate in 2019. And I'm really, really delighted to be here. Yeah, and we are delighted to have you with us, and uh, especially that since you are already not the first time here. Thank you for coming too. Angelica Maroon. Uh, Angelica was uh, since the first days of our event, and we're excited to have you again with us. 
Thank you, Daniel. Hello, everybody, my fellow judges and all of the startups. I'm really excited to hear your pitches today. So as uh, Daniel was saying, my name is Angelica. I am dialing in from Switzerland. I am an impact investor, um, angel investor here, and I accelerate um, investments into um, VC and micro VCs. My, my goal is to find a company that can truly change the way we live today in some way, in some form. So I'm, I'm always looking for something that is emotively interesting, that can grab me at the heart, and then I can put my head behind it so that I can put some numbers in. So good luck, everybody. Do your best, and we'll have a lot of fun. And Angelica always cares, uh, trying to give as much feedback as possible so you guys succeed. So every, she, every time she's sharing something, she really means it. I mean, everyone here, of course, but I mean, uh, uh, Angelica is awesome. And thank you for being with us. Then your turn. Hey, thanks, Danelle. Hey, everyone. Hey, startups. Uh, my name is Dan Ellis. Uh, I am a serial founder. Um, I actually founded my last company in 2013 out in Silicon Valley, where we bootstrapped that for about 18 months before raising institutional venture. And I like to say that we've been through the entire uh, meat grinder. Uh, we raised funds and uh, built out operations and then ended up selling that in 2018 to Workday. And along the way, that's when I became involved in angel investing, which is my primary function today. Uh, so I've invested in all kinds of companies from big and small across a whole bunch of different sectors. I consider my, myself to be sector agnostic. I like to invest a little bit further along. So generally past the idea phase, kind of at a stage where you have a product, it's in market, and you're starting to get some evidence of some traction and momentum. Uh, really looking forward to hearing all of your pitches today and just want to wish you all the best of luck. All right. Uh, great to have you with us. I'm really excited, actually, for any feedback you share. Dan also been uh, so far for like on many events. And uh, I, I'm really glad I'm really glad that he joined us. He he, he found us and since then we, we don't want to let him uh, uh, be somewhere else but with us. So really excited to have you. Happy to be here. All right. In uh, uh, well, please, uh, I mean, you know, this is the time when you open this global event, no pressure on you, but really excited to have you please uh, tell a few words about yourself. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Daniel. And hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm really stoked to meet you. Uh, my name is Ina. I'm currently based in New York. Um, I have been investing for now about six years. And prior to that, I was actually a founder. So I started an education and tech company and uh, led that for a few years and eventually moved on the other side as an investor. And um, I primarily focus on pre-seed and seed companies um, across mostly enterprise, uh, enterprise software, across big industries like climate, health, fintech, future of work, and so on and so forth. Um, I've been uh, previously at a, an early stage fund that supported global companies expand to the US market. So have a bit of experience with companies coming from different parts of the world, wanting to uh, basically commercialize and raise funds from American investors. And after that, I got my MBA at Walton. And while I was in school, I worked for a fund called Moxie Ventures, which is a seed stage fund um, investing in climate um, health companies. And um, I also became a partner at a fund called the MBA Fund, which mostly focuses on pre-seed companies that came out of, that were built by alumni and or current student for Penn, Stanford, and Harvard. Um, and I also do some angel investing on the side. So I'm very excited to meet you all. Um, and um, yeah, good luck today. Exciting. With that words, uh, we're about to kick off the session. Ina, we are excited to have you with us and I hope you enjoy the session. This will be the main stage where you will be uh, actually giving feedback and selecting the startup. So everyone, if any shark decides to uh, connect with you, they will say they are in. If they uh, decide not to connect because, because of many reasons, it's real life, uh, they will say they are out. And, uh, it's, uh, uh, and any feedback they share, they will share this with absolute honesty directly and don't take it personal. This is the way we are trying to help. With that said, please use your real names, so first name, last name, and company name here in uh, in uh, your uh, you know uh, Zoom. And uh, we are starting with the first person, Gary Kohn. Gary, if you are uh, uh, ready to present, uh, please, uh, you may start. Hey, hey, guys, I just sent a message in the chat. I, I'm probably not really a fit for any of these funds. I'm travel tech consumer. And so I wanted to just allow the time for the funds that were probably more appropriate for the people on the panel to have that. Okay. Time. 
Thank you, Gary. But appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to sit here as an observer for a while, but appreciate it. By the way, our company is doing amazing. So, anyways, they are. That's they, it. I, I, I love it. Good to hear. Thank you for saving time for others. I really appreciate that. And it's really uh, amazing when founders are doing this. Well, the next person is Bill. Uh, Bill, are you ready? I am ready. Thank okay. you so much for having me here. Um, again, my name is Bill McCreary, and uh, I'm the face behind Animatrix. And um, so walking my path in the film media industry, and as a designer myself for nearly a decade, I've, I've, you know, I've really faced the challenges and the frustrations that many creative professionals routinely encounter. You know, I'm like I've tussled with the dilemmas of running out of assets or resorting to generic content. I've navigated low resolution issues, I've been snared by copyright traps, and I uh, just cringe at the steep cost of stock photos. And so I've known the struggle of managing multiple, you know, AI tools to pull off just one project, and um, not to mention the nagging worries of like art students, myself included once, about the leap from college to the real professional world. So these challenges uh, to me really echo the necessity for a comprehensive solution and a reliable all-in-one tool that could break the mold. Uh, so this is what how I came up with the Animatrix. It's not just a uh, recreational AI art app. It's uh, it's evolved to be a pro-level partner for real-world creatives like video editors, uh, graphic designers, and more. So we've designed it to cater both to uh, B2B and B2C users via a balanced, uh, focused uh, subscription model. So um, Animatrix goes beyond the scope of recreational AI art. Uh, our offerings range from text to image, AI text to image, uh, image to image, um, transformations, uh, text to video, um, building 3D models, uh, augmented reality avatars, um, and a really unique feature we have, which is SAM technology, which was released by Meta just a few months ago. Uh, where you can actually just uh, just uh, extract all the elements from a photo, like Photoshop everything out with a single click. Um, and that's great for, for people wanting to save time with Photoshop. Uh, fully featured in-painting and out-painting editing suite. As you know, Midjourney just came out with their in-painting feature, which is a huge deal right now. We're going to have that, plus the out-painting and even features and 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 in an integrated marketplace, kind of like Shopify, each user can have their own store. So you pass time, you, you pass time, please wrap it up. Okay, uh, so we're in the MVP, the MVP stage, and my, um, we're looking to raise 500k on safe notes at a 20% discount. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, dear sharks, do you have any questions? Are you in the house? Maybe a little bit of clarity. Question. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was. I just want to know um, and what positions you to be able to build this. Um, would you be able to repeat that, please? It was uh, cutting out sorry. a little bit. That's okay. I just, sorry. I, I just wanted to ask, what's your background? And what uh, positions you to be able to build this this product? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. So I I was a freelancer. I owned a, a video production company for about ten years, and so I did graphic design on the side as well. Um, I have a degree in digital communications, and uh, to build this, uh, I have a team of different people that are doing the uh, the, the actual the um, the like the coding and the um, building of the app. So I'm more just uh, delegating the uh, like what features we're going to include and what we need to and how the design overall is going to look. Bill, could you provide a little bit of clarity around um, what uh, your target audience is for this? Is it freelancers or is it production companies? Do you kind of consider an enterprise product or is it something that an individual would use to augment their work? Yeah, so there's two aspects to it. There's a the consumer and the business end. Uh, so the consumer end, we're uh, targeting freelancers, individuals, creative professionals, like graphic designers, et cetera, uh, and art students. And on the business end, uh, we're targeting small businesses, uh, video production companies, broadcast studios on the larger end, and uh, digital marketing agencies. 
Hey, Bill, can you talk briefly about your uh, early traction? Yeah, so we're we're in um, the MVP stage right now. So we uh, we're just uh, more or less just uh, uh, focused on developing the software. Um, as far as the traction, uh, that will most likely come once we release. All right. Any of the sharks uh, are interested to connect? Are you guys in or out? I'm going to be out on this one just because I think it's early. Um, recommendation, Bill, uh, I know like it was a big word salad, your pitch in terms of like features and who you can serve. And I think all startups, especially when they're starting out, can really benefit from just laser focus. Be like really good at one thing and serve a niche and then kind of treat that as a land and expand type model. Uh, so, yeah, don't boil the ocean with too many features and uh, be laser focused on who you're going to sell to and what the killer feature is. Okay. Yeah, same same thing for me, Bill. Actually, thank you, Dan, for suggesting that. Um, Bill, there are there are a lot of examples of what a, a two minute pitch should follow, the flow it should have. If you practice a little bit, I think you have an interesting product. But you said so many things that people who are not in the field were a little bit confused. So um, do to okay. do do practice on that. Um, I'm out for that same reason, though. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. Appreciate that. And if any of the sharks would express interest, we will connect you. Uh, please stay in the chat and please share your uh, DigiW profile here in the chat so more investors can see further details about you on, and connect on our platform. Uh, and the next person to present is uh, Narut Markarian. Narut, you ready? Harut, yes, I'm ready. Can you hear me? Two minutes. Yeah. All right. Imagine a world where aging in place becomes safer, more independent, and compassionate with. One in three Americans over 65 experiencing falls annually and an aging population craving independence. The challenges are evident. Couple this with a significant caregiver shortage resulting in burnout rates of 77%. And it's clear that a transformative solution is needed. The Ground Robotic Assistant for Care Enablement or GRACE by Markbotics is not just a robot, it's a paradigm shift in healthcare, redefining the way we care for our aging loved ones. By addressing the pressing issues of falls, caregiver fatigue and unnecessary medical costs, Grace uh, brings about a brighter future for seniors and their caregivers. Our revolutionary robot Grace is designed to empower individuals to perform daily tasks safely and independently, alleviate caregiver burnout and emotional stress, enhance accessibility and quality of life, slash operational costs for senior living facilities. The team behind Grace is a dynamic force, graduates from Yale, MIT, and Pepperdine, each with profound expertise in engineering, robotics, and successful startup endeavors. Our business model, Robot as a Service, ensures flexibility and accessibility for users with over 200 letters of intents from individual users seeking in-home care and 35 from assistant living facilities, our traction is palpable. The competitive advantage of GRACE lies in its groundbreaking AI technology. By monitoring patients and their surroundings, GRACE prevents falls, alerts caregivers, and facilitates remote monitoring and operations. This liberates caregivers to focus on the human side of care while GRACE handles routine tasks. The older adult population is the largest consumer healthcare group and the fastest growing segment of the consumer market. The longevity economy is projected to reach 13.5 trillion by 2032, offering immense opportunities for growth. We're seeking $2 million investment to drive software and electromechanical development, supercharge sales and marketing efforts, and support administrative needs with your uh, administrative needs. With your support, we can unleash the true potential of senior care, reshaping an industry and transforming countless lives. Join us in realizing the future of care with grace. Together, we can revolutionize aging, making it a golden opportunity for all. Thank you very much, uh, Harut. And dear Sharks, any questions so far? Harut, is this uh, live? Do you do you actually have a production model? In I don't have a production model. All we have is first first uh, model of our prototype. OK. Is that being used in some practical application right now? Uh, we've we pilot tested on uh, four independent li uh, sorry assisted living facilities with four in the assisted living facilities and over 150 in home cases. Okay, is the intention to then take those pilots and convert it into like paid models? Is there a letter of intents? Co correct. So yeah, we have over 200 letters letters of intent from uh, in home care and. 36 or 37 from assistant living facilities specifically. And our our first market is probably going to be the assisted living facilities because they have the money to pay for it. 
uh, and I don't know where we stand uh, from the insurance perspective. We have we haven't been able to uh, connect with someone that can drive that uh, effort with us. I think tapping into insurance will be critical for your success. But it uh, sounds very interesting. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, Hi, Arut. It sounds it sounds really interesting. I like the project. It is a little bit high um, a raise for my for my ticket size. Um, there, this is not a blue ocean. Um, it is a little, it's becoming a little bit of a red ocean for many reasons. But I like your narrative. I think you're doing the right thing. Um, so just a little word of encouragement. I can't give you much else than that right now. Thank you, Angelica. Thank you. Uh, uh, then uh, does it mean that uh, you are in? Uh, is this correct? So Angelica is out. It's clear, but you are in. Do we connect you? Uh, I love the mission. It's early for us and hardware just as a wheelhouse is one that we just generally don't play in but uh i do think you know as in terms of market size there's a lot of potential here so i will be interested to follow your journey thank you all right thank you i think i think it was a very good pitch um we also are kind of hard we stay away from hardware ourselves but um you know it sounds like you've got uh, some good early traction i hope those uh turn into uh, commercial deals. And I think, uh, you know, it's, you're solving a big problem. So uh, all the best to you. Thank you, Reese. Appreciate it. Thank you. Ina, Yuan, are you guys seeing or out? Um, so I'm out because of the hardware component. I typically just try to stay away from it and focus most on software. However, I have spent time in the senior care space, and I think there's a huge market for that. I think it's going to be more about how do you wedge kind of in the market. So I think assisted living could be a really interesting um, kind of space to look into. But I don't know where you're planning on starting. Obviously, if you're in the U.S., uh, which I'm assuming you are, um, yes. you probably want to be strategic around which state you go out, you go out first. Uh, I think a big state like Texas, I think it would probably be a little easier than a place like California or New York. So that's kind of like, as you think about your initial go-to-market, um, I'll be strategic on that but otherwise best of luck i think um that could be really big. so um yeah looking forward to seeing how you thank you thank you so much Anna. all right yeah I, I, i'm out too but like you know i, I really love the pitch it's just uh you know uh we, we stay away from this uh, you know uh, care um you know uh, uh, ecosystem like you know, the, the, the market there but like you know we, we do look at a lot of we look at more like manufacturing related robotics but yeah this is really cool uh, i really enjoyed it Perfect. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, thank, you. thank you for your feedbacks. Thank you, Harut. And uh, please stay, stay here. If you have more investors in the chat, please share your GW profile and uh, uh, support others. And we're moving to the next person, uh, which is Maxens de Damas. Maxens, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, go for it. Okay, it. perfect. Hey, everybody. So I'm Max. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Filtru. And um, in our digital age, social media has clearly reshaped you know, the way we connect and we engage with, uh, with other people and with brands. But there's a big problem that persists. It's that only influencers with large followings or if they're ce celebrities are able to monetize the engagement and the content that they share on social media. 99% of social media users nowadays, despite generating engaging content and providing value to brands or to platforms, remain unrewarded. So this has literally left billions, 4.6 billion users to be more exact, feeling uh, underappreciated with no tangible ways to, to monetize their content. If you take, for example, the Generation Z, they spend an average of four hours per day connected on social media, sharing content daily, but they're not earning anything on, unless they're influencers. So we decided to build a platform to uh, dedicated to turning this tide. Basically, Filtry is way more than just an app. It's a revolution for every social media user. We allow every user, everyone, to monetize their content effortlessly through an innovative points and rewards system. So basically, we turn engagement on TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat into a source of side income for all users and not just the influencers. We basically work by uh, allowing users to earn points every time they post content, every time they tag brands, and every, tag, uh, every time they tag friends. And then these points, can be redeemed for rewards from over 10,000 brands that we already work with uh, worldwide. So the goal here, and basically what we do is we created an, a new incl inclusive income stream for the 99% uh, of users who use social media who are not influencers, but they still create and share content. Basically, we empower everyone. 
In terms of metrics so far, uh, we've had uh, more than 4 million people use our technology. We're already in the top 1% of content creators from TikTok, generating more than 11 million organic uh, views and impressions with the content created. And we're currently uh, doing an early seed run of 1 million euros, and we have already closed 60% uh, of that round. All right, thank you. And uh, dear Sharks, do you have any questions? Let's go first. And... Um, it's not uh, t entirely clear, Max, to me, um, how you are generating uh, money for influencers or like kind of how the business model works. Can you just walk through like a really simple example? Like, let's just say I'm a micro influencer, mm -hmm. like 10,000 followers that now what, you know, I come on your platform. What does that now look like? Okay, so you download our app, you're going to connect your TikTok account. The first thing you're going to see is a feed and a library of all the effects and filters that you can use in your TikTok videos. Every time you're going to use and select a filter to try it on, it will send you to the TikTok application with the camera open, with the filter on. And as soon as you share it, you're going to earn points. If you tag a brand associated to that filter, you earn points. If you tag your friends, you earn more points. And then with those points, you can immediately redeem them for rewards through our, through our app. Rewards, we're talking discounts, coupons, gift cards from uh, 10,000 brands that, that we have. So basically, um, it's an under indirect way for every user to be earning money uh, by sharing content on, on social media. So you get, you are issuing these points out, but how are you generating income? Do you have partnerships with brands and then yeah. by vis-a-vis -vis the users then promoting those brands, you're rewarding them? Exactly, exactly. So all the brands that we give uh, rewards from, it's through affi an affiliate uh, marketing model. So we're already partnered on four affiliate networks. So imagine every a user, he comes in, he shares a, a TikTok video, he earns 100 points. Then with those points, he, he gets a 20% discount on Amazon. He's okay. going to go to Amazon and use that discount. From the 80% remaining, we earn a commission from that. Okay. Uh, it's not clear how the filters uh, factor into this. Like, how is that just a tangential to this in some way? So the, the filters is how we decided initially to to go by, because uh, these augmented reality filters in effect are very trending right now on TikTok and other platforms like Snapchat and Instagram. And uh, for the users, it's a very interactive way to incentivize them to to share content and okay. video. And for brands, they can advertise through these filters, which is okay. a very engage uh, engaging way to to advertise that converts okay. 15 times more than normal so it's just a kind of a creative value add that you're giving influencers to participate exactly got it okay cool and what can you talk about your top line my what like, sorry oh yeah your top line revenue uh are you currently generating revenue yeah so we've uh, generated so far we're pre-launched so we're launching now in september but with the mvp we've done uh we've worked with five uh, five brands who advertise through these augmented reality filters We've had a 70K of ARR uh, euros in, in the past year. And, um, and now also we're launching officially now the, the platform in, in September. Okay. Anyone interested to connect? Uh, do you have any more questions? Okay. I think for me, it's, it's not so much a question, it's more of a feedback. So um, mm -hmm. I guess I, I, I personally would be out because besides the fact that I do mostly enterprise and that's mostly consumer, um, I, I, the companies that regenerate the revenue from ads are struggling quite a bit at the moment. So I really would think a bit more about what could be your alternatives to, to be able to grow the business because anything sort of social media is also really, I mean, you really need to benefit from network effects and things like that. And I think that that's where some of the big companies, including, you know, the metas of the world are also struggling around that. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of curious to see how do you, how do you go from that zero to 1 million revenue, for instance, to that one to 10 million, 10 to 50 to a hundred million. Right. Um, I think that's where you might actually, you might struggle a little bit. So I would really try to find a, a, a more sustainable path for, to, to continue to have users and therefore also revenue. So it's more of a feedback. All right. Thanks for the feedback. All right. Thank I'm you. curious from a user perspective. Um, uh, so, so how how much does an average user could earn by you know uh, you know through your pro through through a platform? Yeah, we're talking about between a hundred to two hundred dollars per month. 
And uh, based based on that, uh, since we launched you know, the, the MVP, uh, all the traffic we had, so for the 4 million people that you know got, started using the filter so far on TikTok, we, we validated the markets that we thought you know would be the biggest one, which is Asia and Latin America. So we have like 40% of our traffic coming from Indonesia, then 15% from Malaysia, from Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico. Okay. No, thanks. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, if any of the investors would be interested to connect, we will definitely connect. Uh, um, please share your information here in the chat and your GW profile and support others. Uh, mm -hmm. will, uh, then uh, moving to the other uh, presenters, uh, just a small announcement for everyone. I know you guys pushing us to give someone, uh, some of you priority. We, give, we select people uh, uh, based on the criteria we announced. And please don't push my team. We try to give everyone equal opportunity. So we, you will be on the list. The list is getting updated. Just don't worry. Uh, the next person to present is, uh, just one second, is Philip Akhzar. Philip, are you ready? Great pronunciation. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Go uh, cool. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Uh, my name is Philip Akhzar. I'm the founder and CEO of Arca. And we've built an API that has helped ship uh, over a million units of packaging thus far. And so what we do is we have an API. It'll connect to any warehouse management system. So it's a universal API that connects to any WMS. Uh, and a WMS is essentially like the brain of a warehouse. And by warehouse, think an Amazon warehouse, where their objective function is to pick, pack, and ship products like these, products like these, any typical product you would get in the mail. Um, how warehouses currently govern their packaging is still a process that predates the fax machine. Um, they will walk the warehouse floor. They will count how many boxes there are. They might write it down on a clipboard, and then they will flip open a catalog, pick up the phone, and order more packages for their warehouse so that their merchants can get their product sh shipped out the door. Um, how we differentiate from that process is our API will connect to the WMS, It'll digest that data. We'll be able to leverage machine learning and AI to be able to configure uh, when they're running low and track trends and be able to forecast on when the packaging is going to run out. We'll set a low water threshold. When it hits that threshold, we send them more. We automatically update their WMS with a ship notice or an ASM uh, or a WRO. Um, we currently have an LOI being drafted with a company called Flexport. Uh, we closed a seed round last year and are looking for an additional 500k to satisfy this project uh, that we have an LOI for. Um, I can pause there and answer any questions y'all might have, but happy to dive deeper. All right, thank you so much. Uh, dear Sharks, do you have any questions? Thanks, Philip. Um, just out of curiosity, so would you kind of categorize this as something as like sort of supporting a just in time inventory management for these packaging companies? Broadly speaking, strictly not not for packaging. So you said you said for packaging companies, it wouldn't be yes. for packaging companies. It would be for um, fulfillment centers, warehouses that Got pick, it. pack, and ship products. They already have they already have great software that lets them know when they're running out of product. The problem is they don't have the software that tells them when they run out of packaging that gets paired with that product. Uh, reason being is because there's no there's there's nothing feeding analytics into the warehouse from the packaging provider standpoint. Like it's a very antiquated system that most of these packaging providers use. Me myself, I'm an industrial engineer. I did this since I was like 19 years old. I first worked at Boeing uh, in the commercial aviation services offices. Uh, I then uh, then I worked for a smaller YC backed startup, ran into the same problem. I actually went through YC myself. Uh, had a packaging related company prior to this. Exited that position started ARCA, um, but sorry, to answer your question, uh, it's for fulfillment centers, uh, not packaging companies. Got it, okay. And- um, well, so, you consider, consider yourself an API company or a packaging management platform? We're an API company in the sense that we'll connect to any WMS and our universal API is able to plug into any WMS. You know, you, you can go through our website as an SMB design and produce uh, design and order packaging, but we don't own any of the packaging. We don't produce any of the packaging. We don't store any of the packaging. This is a pure software play.
Okay. Any of the sharks are interested to connect? Are you guys in or out? Um, um sounds like I, I would be kind of interested to follow your journey as well. Um, just because you're in that B2B space and I'd love to hear especially how your uh, Flexport deal goes. I'm excited about it too, to see how it goes. Okay. Um, sorry, so who's in, who's out? Sure. So uh, Dan is in, uh, Yuan, is in. Yuan is in. All right, congratulations. So, so two sharks are in, so fantastic. So, and uh, yeah, so good luck. Please uh, share your details and the GGW profile in the chat and uh, support others. Uh, Okay, so moving uh, to the next uh, person. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher Faraguna. Christopher, you ready? Yes, hello, everybody. You got to. Um, my name is, okay. My name is Chris Faraguna. I'm the founder of the WinQuest app. WinQuest is an augmented reality uh, treasure hunting app that works globally now. The MVP is done and we're live in the Google Play Store in uh, 177 nations. We just uh, went live. We also just got a patent um, in Japan for our technology. Um, basically, WinQuest is different than other augmented reality ventures because people can win real tangible prizes. And we have other games inside our app that are, you know, uh, games of skill, chance to win games. So we have an exciting treasure hunting and game, uh, game challenge app that's live and uh, the sector, according to Brandview's research by 2027, the, uh, the mobile AR gaming sector is supposedly gonna be about $274 billion sector by 2027. And so we're excited to be in this sector. It took uh, quite a long time to get the technology right, but we have the same capabilities as Pokemon Go in that we can have a citywide you know, events with augmented reality with our, you know, technology. So we're also looking to uh, advance in, in the 2.0 kind of model. Uh, what we have in our patents is to connect AI with AR, to connect merchants to users and in an augmented reality digital ed platform application. So um, that's in the future. After we get the downloads, we can then present augmented reality billboards and, and advertisements uh, in real time to people according to their data profile. So we're looking to raise a half a million in safe notes. So if you have any questions. All right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, Sharks, what do you think? Let's start. Chris, do you have questions? Um, no, I mean, it sounds like a really cool game, uh, but G gaming is not really for me that's not an area i invest in um but um you know it sounds like you've got you know maybe maybe a, a next big game yeah same here gaming is really not my field but it sounds like you're really riding a good wave so good luck with everything thank you awesome. i have a question I have a question yeah. for you, Christopher. Um, congrats on, on you know being able to pull that off and, and building the product. I'm curious, you know, what's your currently your sort of like your your sales strategy? How do you plan to kind of like go to market and being able to uh you know to, to sell this to your customers? Well, the go-to-market strategy, we're following the Facebook model and uh there was an app called Yik Yak that got millions of downloads, and that is you know, doing street outreach, uh outreach to let people know that they can win cash and prizes through our raffles our free scratch offs free raffles and our share and earn contest and that they can activate augmented reality treasure hunts in their area if they download the app so um that's our our model and that's how you know facebook got traction and how you know this other app yik yak got traction and got a couple of million downloads within a year so that's our go-to marketing strategy Got it. I can certainly know that the gaming community is really big. So I think if you crack the code on where they are, then you can really go viral very fast. So best of luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, um, you, you had something? Yeah, yeah. I was just, uh, uh, I, I guess the ch challenge for gaming is that, like, you know, every game, like, it, like you can't. It, it, it's hard. It's hard to envision like a company like go really big just with one game, right? Because like eventually you're going to need to build like. Uh, 
like it, 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 it's game after games after games after games and sometimes it takes some luck for for for, for them to like yeah. get traction, right so i think that 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 would be probably some 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 like concerns in there yeah well if you rely completely on content that's what pokemon go did and that's the trap they went into that they got went from a billion downloads down to 72 million because they rely too much on content i'm relying on the chance to win which is a viral part you know of like scratch offs a lottery sector everybody likes a chance to win cash and prizes so that's what i'm the model we're using for it to go viral and we are going to we do have scratch offs raffles share and earn contest the augmented reality treasure hunt but we also have a partner that we're going to work with that for augmented reality basketball augmented reality soccer you know we have trivia and guess the price as well in our app so it's going to be a multifaceted you know uh game of skill chance to win app where people can enter into contests to win bigger prizes and uh you know that anybody can enter the right. they they thank can you. enter the reality it's thank you Chris. It. appreciate that yeah uh and uh appreciate that a great presentation uh also uh i know that some investors wanted to connect with you on our platform check it out so it seems like there, there should be some more connections with, uh, just check there and share your ggw profile here in the chat um yeah it's been amazing guys uh so many hands we already we still have 20 hands uh, willing to pitch so we're gonna move on to uh, faster to others so, so try to give opportunity to pitch more however uh quality first and uh, my team is selecting so i share the list um the next person to present is yibin who yibin uh are you there ready yes i am ready thank you All right uh glad to have you please uh, it's you got two minutes yes hi everyone my name is yibin i'm co-founder of bitvisor we are a renewable energy company uh, from germany we develop land plots into renewable energy sites in norway the B2B customer come to us when they want to use 100% renewable energy, we earn a commission rate on the electric power. Or the B2B customers can also come to us to utilize the sustainable data center infrastructure. In this case, we earn a commission rate on the electric power plus a service fee. Both of the fees are calculated on a monthly basis, which means our business model generates recurring revenue and the turn rate is extremely low. Um, since incorporation in the middle of last year, we put our first 5 megawatt site online in March 23, which generates positive revenue since then. We have also acquired three additional sites uh, with 34 megawatt in total and one solar farm. This gives us 40 million euro revenue per year from 2024. According to our research, both of the market of um, renewable energy and great green data center infrastructure will experience a market growth of more than 250 um, percent. A short introduction about our team. We are four co-founders. All of us are in Germany. We have profound industry experiences. We are in the renewable energy and data center industry since 2015. We have built 141 megawatt sites in total in our career. Um, one of our co-founders, uh, very interesting, he was on the Bloomberg TV in 2021 for his contribution to renewable energies. Um, now we're raising 8 million USD to accelerate the growth of the company, especially to conduct construction work. Thank you. Thank you very much. And sounds like uh, it's close to Switzerland and maybe Angelica might be <laughs> first to ask something. <laughs> Actually, thank you, Daniel. That was a great lead. Um, Ibn, it, thank you. That was a good presentation. Of course, you are very much in the space that I am interested in, which is uh, sustainability and renewable energy is that. To be honest with you, you are raising higher than the ticket I am used to. However, please connect with me and I'll see if I can hook you up with a few venture capital funds around that may be more, more in your line of, um, of size right now. Thank you so much. We have one uh, shark is in. So what about the rest of the sharks? Yeah, um your company is called Bitvisor. Is there a cryptocurrency component to what you're doing? um well it depends some of the customer they use the renewable energy um, with very low price they do data uh, they do crypto mining which is uh, that will not be reflected in our earning but in their running okay i see any other shorts 
Yeah, this sounds really interesting. Um, uh, and congrats on you know the, the, the progress so far. Um, I, I, I guess um, at the beginning, it, it, it went a little bit too fast about like um, you know how, how everything kind of works, right? So so uh, it would be great to learn more for sure. And I, I guess, but from from what I'm what, what I'm hearing, it sounds like it, it could be uh, a little bit more capital intensive. Like how do you how do you think about like scaling? Um, Yes, it is very capital intensive. Um, regarding scaling, I would say um, it's not like a SaaS business model that uh, the software can be scaled um, as long as the infrastructure beneath works. Um, but I would say um, in our data center case, um, first, the market growth is there. And second, we build one site once and the recurring revenue just come in that way. What we have to give as effort is very low, such as maintenance, surveillance, all of them are can, can be done with with AI, with civilian software systems, and that's um, very low effort in the um, after the site is constructed. Um, actually, um, I think green data center is extremely important in ESG and AI because if there is no co-location, there is no AI. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Yibin. I, I have a, a two-part question here. Uh, the first one is, can you tell us a bit more about the current state of the market, meaning that what do your customers actually currently use right now? Um, and I guess when they reach out to you, what exactly is the, what particular feature of what you have to offer they're most excited about? And the second piece is, can you tell us a bit more about, um, you know, how you plan on scaling? Kind of like you, you talked a little bit about the revenue model, but what's the plan the next sort of three, four quarters? Yes, sure. Thank you for the question. So the first question, um, the currently the customer, they use the energy resources. Some of them are not um, carbon neutral. You know, we all know that the 1.5 uh, degree target uh, of, the, of the globe is uh, going to be achieved. So what we provide them is we are certified renewable energy provider and they can use this um, like um, carbon neutrality in their um, upstream um, carbon uh, portfolio to reduce uh, like to reach an ESG target to reduce total carbon emission. Um, that's one of the best benefits we provide to the customer. And second is we build data center and customize it very quickly, which means if the customer wants to have a co-location customized for his AI or his or her AI workload, we can do that as well with our strategic partner, different OEMs in Taiwan, for instance. And the second question to, to the um, business model and scaling, um, well, what we earn from the electric power commission and the, uh, the service fee is only a part. If we say, okay, if um, we know the AI workloads for the customer are also capital intensive, we will also develop the model to, to um, build a joint venture with the customer and earn also a, um, a share on the AI workload um, revenue. That's also possible. That's one of the targets actually. Okay, so any other sharks uh, part of Angelica is interested to connect? Okay, thank you so much, Ibin. Uh, we will connect you with Angelica after the event today or tomorrow. So uh, 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 please, uh, uh, please stay, stay tuned and share your uh, GGW profile in the chat and other contacts and support others. The next person to present is um, uh, Natalie Poston. Natalie, you there? Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, my co-founder, Ali, will be presenting with me. No problem. Okay, you got two minutes. Go for it. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. I am Natalie, co-founder of Joylet and a stepmom of three. My background, I've spent about a decade in marketing and PR consulting for CPG brands like Starbucks and Hershey's before pivoting into venture capital, where I was for the last two and a half years. So let's dig into the problem. The process of acquiring baby gear and toys for parents is expensive, overwhelming, inefficient, and wasteful. Parents are wasting precious time and over $10,000 for gear and toys that, quick, that kids will quickly grow out of or never use. Our solution is Joylet. We're a baby gear and toddler toy rental marketplace that allows millennial and Gen Z parents to use and swap gear as their babies grow throughout the different developmental stages from birth until kindergarten. And we partner with manufacturers as their preferred rental engine. So Joylet is a sales channel, a marketing partner, and a data and insights source for top brands like Baby Bjorn Thule, Slumberpod, and Wonderfold. 
In terms of traction, we've earned over $40,000 in our pilot. We've served more than 200 customers with 350 rentals, but more importantly, we've achieved 100% five-star reviews, which gives us early signs of product market fit. Hi, I'm Allie, co-founder and first-time mom, and I bring deep experience in rental operations, having spent the majority of my career in strategy and M&A at United Rentals. Now, the way Joylet works is we rent gear to our customers by the month. They can rent one or more products a la carte or opt into a curated stage-based or activity-based bundle. We charge them a monthly subscription fee for each product plus a one-time service fee at checkout to offset our cost to deliver, pick up, and clean the gear. Now, the market is ready for this solution. The baby gear and toddler toy market is $32 billion here in the U.S., Plus, the sharing economy is growing at a 32% CAGR, and resale markets are expected to outpace traditional retail by 11 times. Now, we've raised a small angel round from Georgetown Angels last summer, and we're now raising a $1.5 million pre-seed round to deepen our penetration in our D.C.-based Mid-Atlantic hub, secure an inventory deal, and a second market hub, build a core team. Now, we have 200000 in soft commitments towards our first tranche. And our minimum check size is 25K. Thanks. Thank you very much. Great presentation and right on time. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, dear Sharks, your questions. Uh, yeah, great uh, pitch. That was very succinct. Um, so do you actually own the products or are you acquiring them secondhand initially and then redistributing them? And then once you use a product, are you like kind of cleaning it up, ensuring its integrity before re-renting it? Yeah. So during the last year, which has been really our pilot phase, we've been buying the gear wholesale from manufacturers, which is typically about 50% of retail, where we're going with this pre-seed round. And this is contingent on closing part of the, the round is we are moving towards an asset light strategy over time. So in this next stage, we are pursuing equipment leasing. So we have two interested parties that would own our products. We would rent it from them and re-rent it to our customers, which allows us to kind of mimic peer-to-peer -peer economics. And our goal is at the seed to move towards revenue share with our suppliers where they maintain ownership of the products. We run the rental operations and kind of split the economics. And that's why in this stage, we're really focused on building those strong relationships with suppliers being a source for data feedback is, you know, we see a lot more of the consumer behavior life cycle than, you know, a one-time kind of sale to a consumer. Are you aware of any uh, competitors in the toy rental market? There is, so there's a baby, there's a company called Baby Quip, which is a baby gear rental company. They really don't compete in this space. They are a travel rental company, we are in what we call in-home rentals. So we rent a bassinet to a customer for four months, a swing for six months, et cetera. Um, not this like kind of weekend or week long. There is one other competitor in this space. They play in different geographic markets than us. And we stay close with them. We have a good relationship. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And one thing I'll just clarify is we're renting the big durable items. So like Ali said, bassinet, bouncers, big developmental toys. So there are toy rental companies that focus on, you know, smaller toy boxes and things that are small in size. We're more focused on those big durable assets that have a better um, rental and economic profile. Just sort of intuit that people might resist the idea of renting things when it comes to their babies. I know like having, I'm, I'm a father for context and I just remember, like I really felt like price was not an object in many cases uh, to acquire things. And it was always like products that I could see and touch. And uh, uh, you know, ultimately I would own and I would know the quality and that it wasn't used and abused before acquiring it. What do your, like, what do you do? or your claims on demand and like how do you sort of prove out that this market actually exists yeah i mean i think one you know we've thought about this we're like why now right like why now is the right time and it's really the younger millennial and gen z behavioral trends that we're seeing in the market so this is a consumer segment who is very open to secondhand they care a ton about sustainability and we're offering them like a circular way to access these items 
the alternative that exists for this buying behavior is to go on like Facebook marketplace and try to get something secondhand. Um, and that's a really painful process, like just with the amount of scammers and the inconsistent inventory. So we really think the consumer behavior is ready for this now. And because we actually own all the inventory, because we buy it from the suppliers and we're very focused on safety, cleaning and inspection, which we also develop with the suppliers, we're giving parents a huge peace of mind that they can't get from other secondhand alternatives. Yeah, I, th I really feel like stamping it with your approval for, you know, it meets the standards is as good as new, I think it would be a way because, you know, the, the Facebook marketplace, I remember when we were cycling out the old stuff and getting the new, yeah. we dumped everything on there and it got snapped up very quickly. So yeah. clearly there is a demand for a second hand and people are okay with it. Uh, but I just think for you, you might serve that segment that is a little bit different than them that yeah. maybe like the sustainability circular economy play, but you know, then it's like, it's their child, it's their baby. So the question is, oh, is the gear like meet mm -hmm. the standards of, you know, being nearly new? Uh, and, I, and I think if you had some way to like kind of certify it and you you shared your, the rigor that you went through to do that, that would be great for you. Yeah, totally. And the marketing message we use right now is like, like new for you. Um, it's kind of the way that we communicate that. Yeah. And I, I will add, like when we first started the business, we thought cost was going to be a big driver of demand. And we're finding that that is maybe third or fourth on the list. Really, it's the convenience factor of being able to get this stuff out of their house the moment that they're done using it, right? Like you use this massive $500 bassinet for three or four months and then you don't touch it again, right? And you have to now either store that somewhere, which is really hard to do in a city or go and resell it, which is a huge hassle for, you know, a mom that's three months postpartum. Sure. Um, also the flexibility, right? We have parents that swap out different bassinets or different bouncers because what works for one baby doesn't necessarily work for the other. So having that flexibility of, okay, I don't have to do a ton of research and commit to this one $400 asset. I can test it out, see if my baby actually likes it and have that flexibility to change my mind. All right. I love that. Yeah. I love that messaging where, you know, a, a swing is a great example. Like mm -hmm. our kid couldn't get enough of it, but other parents we knew would invest in that and they used it one time and hated it. <laughs> so I think if you had that sort of try before you, you know, yeah. commit type model and you emphasize that, that that's an interesting channel for you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we also, we offer try to buy as well. So people can buy out things that they expect to use long-term. Yeah, great. All right. As a grandparent whose house is getting filled with the, the bouncers and bassinets, I mean, I can, I can absolutely relate to the problem you're solving. Um, it's not an investment area for us, but uh, there's there is there is a I think a market out there for you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, any of the sharks interested to connect just to make sure that uh, I didn't miss, miss it? Anyone in? Okay. Thank you, Ali, uh, Ali uh, uh, and your colleagues. So, uh, well, great presentation and great questions. Uh, uh, Please share your information here in the chat uh, and also DigiW profile so people will be able to connect with you. We have more investors in here. And the next person to present, uh, just give me a second, I'm gonna see it. Uh, it's uh, uh, Philip uh, Jakes. Philip, you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Hello, Shucks. Um, ever wished your database could simply understand what you want to know, like asking a friend a question? Imagine if instead of writing complex SQL queries, all you had to do was ask. Enter SQL for me, the game-changing solution that lets users effortlessly converse with their database. Just ask a question, and our cutting-edge technology translates it into an SQL query in real time. Not only that, but the results, they're presented back in the most user-friendly ways, be it a clear answer, organized table, or even a visual graph through our integrated BI tool. Now you might be thinking, Sounds revolutionary, but what about my data security? I don't want my data to go to the open AI. No worries there, we got you covered. We utilize the state-of-the-art fine-tuned machine learning model uh, based on Llama 2. And the whole system runs on-premise, ensuring that your data never leaves your network. So you get innovation without compromising on security. Our robust solution isn't just theoretical. It's already being used by two innovative companies. 
and behind it, uh, a passionate team uh, with six years of experience in both machine learning and software engineering. In a world overwhelmed by data, we were making getting insights, insights as easy as asking, how's your day? Help us make data conversions simple and intuitive. Are you ready to revolutionize the way people interact with their data? Great, thank you. Uh, right on time, even faster than usually. Uh, dear Sharks, your <laughs> questions. <laughs> Hey, Philip, just out of curiosity, the you know I'm not asking for the names of the companies you're working with, but you know what uh, what kind of companies are they and how big are they? I'm just wondering if this can work in a really large enterprise. Uh, of course. Uh, so one of our clients is um, a retail company, uh, which is the largest retailer in uh, Montenegro. So they have, uh, I think, uh, over 2,000 employees, uh, over 60 stores, and the other one is. Um, a uh, software development company, which is over 30 years old and has, has 60 software engineers. We are right now in, in talks. We have pipelines and deals near, nearly ready to close with about five more companies here in the region. And we are also in negotiations uh, for a partnership with a security company uh, from the US, uh, which, could, which is interesting, interested in adding our solution and uh, helping us sell it to, to their clients. Philip, so this is actually connecting to databases, right? Like, so the tool, the tool is aware of the schema that it's like interrogating, right? Exactly. The tool okay. just connected to the database and it uh, completely maps out to the whole scheme. Okay. Um, based on relations that are defined. So you're assuming that there's a well-defined schema in there. Of course, it, of course. Yeah. Uh, do you, does it actually generate the SQL and are you able to like visually see what it's generating? Yes, of course, uh, you can see it in our demo. Uh, so the, uh, the application generates the SQL code and then runs it and uh, returns to you the data. The data is in tables uh, as an answer. If, for example, a user asks uh, how many uh, sneakers did I sell yesterday, or it can be as a graph in, uh, in our BI tool. Okay. Yeah, um, I have a question. So, uh, so, so you said your, your product's built on Llama too, right? So it seems like a really intuitive concept and problem you're solving. So I guess the question is, how how are you re going to remain competitive? Then, like for like you know, uh, against like the other people who are using similar you know platforms to build similar solutions. Uh, of course, that's a great question. So uh, first of all, we have right now two main competitors. Uh, one is Defog, and uh, the Y Combinator invested uh, half a million in them. And the other is called, called AI Helper Bot, but they still don't have the on-premise model. So we have uh, the advantage there that we already have it developed while they are uh, only developing it right now. Uh, in addition to that, we are uh, amassing a large collection of data. So uh, as, we, as I mentioned, we already have clients which are using it daily. Uh, and uh, through our partnerships, we have access to the, uh, a lot of SQL queries and examples that uh, the, the companies that uh, we are working with generate uh, each day. So uh, I, I think that can be one of our main advantages that we have proprietary data on which we fine tune our models. And each day by day, we get more and more of that data. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Phil, about how you are tuning the model. So if there's, you know, if, if there's sort of consistently something that the tool is doing incorrectly, maybe there's a, a table that I wanted to ignore, like how much customization uh, do I have as a user to be able to influence those, uh, th those sort of uh, fine tuning? Mm -hmm. Of course. Like. So. Uh... First of all, if you are a power user who already knows SQL and wants to just speed up his process of uh, creating SQL queries, uh, it is a, a very, uh, I guess that's the best case because the, you can immediately make a correction in the SQL query, run it, and our system uh, logs that the uh, correction was being made and then uh, fine tunes uh, the asking question that you, uh, the question that you asked with the resulting SQL. Uh, in the other case where the user is not, um, and not a, a power user, if the user not, does not know SQL, uh, the user can give a feedback through our application. And um, uh, we are uh, uh, piloting a feature where the user can uh, uh, ask uh, 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 SQL query to be verified but why, by one of our engineers. So the user can ask, is this query okay? Uh, and our engineers uh, uh, in a couple of hours or a day uh, at least, uh, they can verify the query and confirm them. And then uh, each of that confirmations is also one data point 
that we use to fine tune our model to work to work more precisely. Okay, so you're kind of fine tuning it with this like human in a loop type model. Absolutely. Uh, behind the and are you finding your customers are taking advantage of that? Because that I, that has been feedback that I've heard from similar tools where they're generating it, but it, since the user may not be highly capable of SQL, they don't actually know if the result they're getting is what they want. And so then it becomes a question of faith um, yes, and whether they course. believe the integrity of the tool. Of course, but let me just add, uh, uh, we tested our solution on some of the questions that our users are asking and the, the precision is, is uh, practically 99%. So uh, it, uh, it will work uh, as good as humans writing SQL. So that is the, I, that is the important uh, thing there. Awesome. Well, I'd be happy to connect. This is uh, definitely something that's in our wheelhouse. So. Okay, thank you. One shark is in. What about the rest? I'd be interested to have a follow-up discussion. Fantastic. Two Excellent. sharks are in. Fantastic. Any other? Happy, happy, happy. Three sharks are in. Congratulations. So uh, we are about to hit the jackpot. So two, two more people. <laughs> 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 what about Angelica and Ina? It, it's a very interesting project. And everybody I speak with, they always have exactly the problem that Philip is talking about. So I do see that it, it is a problem, but it's, it's not my sector, but well done. If you solve that issue, you're doing great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And Ina, out? I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I will take an intro, I'll take a call because I want to learn a bit more about how you're going about that because I've seen a couple of solutions um, similar to that and I'm still trying to understand how they plan on going around. So I'm, I'm curious to just hear how you try to crack the code there. Um, and hopefully that can be helpful to you too. So, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Well, it's almost a jackpot. Four sharks are in and uh, it's congratulations. You are like almost there. Like, great job. Thank you. Thank so, you very much. Thank share, you for this opportunity. Share your GGW profile and support others here in the chat. It's so hard to pitch. Uh, we know that. So yeah, please uh, stay with us till then. Next person to present is... Uh, uh, Conloth Mach Mal Holland. Uh, if I good job, good if job I... on the pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. Um, my name is Conloth Mulholland. It's lovely to meet everyone today. I'm the CEO and founder of Benjin. Benjin is a free app that's aimed at car enthusiasts, and it's going to be an all-in-one platform. Version one is going to contain two main features. The first feature is uh, artificial intelligence, guided diagnostics, and repairs. So when the user opens the Benjin app, they pick which car they want to work on in their Benjin garage. It brings them to the diagnostic screen where they they explain the, the problem to Benjin. Benjin brings up the possible causes of that problem, the solutions, the how-to videos on how to repair yourself, the lengths to the parts you need for each specific repair, the lengths to the tools you need, and a difficulty rating from one, one to 10. If you decide it's too difficult, it will connect you with mechanics in your area. The second feature of Benjin is going to be a social media side of things where users can interact with the community and ask them on different aspects of their cars. There will be uh, the option to swap parts with people across the world and talk about parts amongst each other. We're also going to have a uh, a media feed which is going to be streaming live motorsports um i've actually been in uh, negotiations with a co-founder who has a patent on uh, real-time betting on sports so we're planning to maybe integrate uh, this into say for example drag racing never before has drag racing been able to be bet on up until eight seconds before the result is uh, is announced so I think that there is very exciting, and that's just one of the, the items that we're going to be building into it for version one. So what's the problem that we face right now, the DIY car repair market? So the traditional way is we have to go, we have a problem with our car. We have to go on Google, start searching that problem, loads of unrelated content. Then we have to go on YouTube, watch through loads of unrelated uh, video. Then once we have the answer, we have to go and start searching parts and go part numbers. And you have to type it into every single website independently. My plan is to have the, the, the type the part in once and compare parts across all, all platforms like O'Reilly's, AutoZone, um, Napa, all those guys. So you can find the best prices and the fast and ship, fastest shipping times. Your boss, uh, right. please wrap it up. Okay, so I'm working with the company Citrus Bits. They uh, uh, have worked with um, 
Burger King, National Geographic, Mercedes-Benz, PayPal, to build their apps, to name a few. Um, their lead of design worked for uh, Disney, BMW, doing their creative content. And the developer won first place in 2013 and 2012 in the NASCAR, NASCON speed programming competitions and the DICE speed pro programming competition in 2013. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, dear Sharks, what do you think? A quick question: um, Are you are you thinking about replacing uh, fan clubs and things like that? This this is, seems to be a new trend. I've heard of a number of different people who are trying to do clubs of especially exotic cars and stuff. Or are you trying to become more serviceable by a wider public? Who's your target? So my target market right now is going to be. Um car enthusiasts from like the age of 16 to 35 and the reason that that we've picked that market is um because uh you the, it, it shows like statistics shows that people from 16 to 25 spend the most money on their cars aftermarket parts you know they want to add like turbos or intakes you know they're they're young they've just got a car they want to spend the money so um that's the target market we want to plan it's more like um just as you say the the car clubs so right now you have to search through multiple forums for certain cars. It's like, I've got a Honda Civic forum. I've got like a, you've got a Ferrari forum, you know? So every car has a cult following. So that's the plan for the chat rooms, separate chat rooms for each car cult following. All right, thank you. Yeah. I feel like you've got sort of a couple of distinct products in here and they're like both like pretty aspirational. Um, like, I mean, I think gearheads are, are very like into cars and they will invest in these platforms and participate. Um, but how like the idea of like kind of creating this do it yourself. They, and by the way, I, like, I love the concept and I try to uh, fix my car and, and be involved. I like like to tinker with those kind of things. Yeah. Um, but like in terms of like building that database, that seems like like a very aspirational to me because like where do you train the, the uh, any kind of ai model or anything in that i mean it sounds like it would be an exercise in creating the content from scratch which would con yeah. you know can take years no so how, how do you sort of like turbocharge that okay so there's a there's loads of uh stuff online so we've done our testing so we built the proof of concept already and we've done our testing with the free version of chat gbt and it's it's slow but it's good, you know, it gets us the answers we need um, and links to the videos, links to like just what I described there. So um, we are planning to train this AI from scratch, but there's uh, there is, um, you know, like Haynes manuals online forums. We plan to scan all that stuff and upload all that into our uh, language model. Oh, but okay. you're, you're using you're using uh, images that data to kind of for, for the, the diagnostics, right? Um, it's more like more like um, more like uh, like script. Script, okay. You know, describing the problems. Yeah. So I'm I'm an enthusiast, but I'm outside of your age demographic. But <laughs> I will say you you had me uh, kind of interested from that perspective with the first two pieces but then it just felt like it got really messy when you started talking about adding drag racing feeds and things like that i mean yeah I you know do do one or two things really well try to do a whole bunch of things you're likely to uh, mm. run into issues yeah so our plan was always to just focus on the um, diagnostic side of things first and get that there down and maybe partner with some of the bigger stores if possible um the media feed was more of a you know you're not working on your car every week you, this is more like bring users back again oh there's a live sporting events let's have a watch party with all my friends i'm going to invite these guys we're going to watch the sports together on the bench and up I do want to echo what Reese is saying to you, though. Um, there's like two distinct startups in here, if not more. I would pick one and focus on that. Got it. OK. Thank you. Are there any uh, sharks interested to connect? All right. Thank you so much. Sorry, I didn't pronounce, I, uh, pronounce your name incorrectly, but oh, you don't like, you don't agree at job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to meet everyone. Yep. Uh, share your information and the UGGW profile and support others. And the next person to present is 
Carrick Patterson. And uh, before you do that, uh, uh, there is another person we promised to pitch uh, from the previous events. Uh, um, his name is Jay Shah. Jay, uh, if you're here, respond to me in the chat, and uh, we will let you uh, give you priority to pitch because we promised you since the last event. Okay. Uh, Hi, so, sorry, I'm here. Hello, how are you? Who is this, Garrick? This is Jay. Oh, this is Jay. Jay, you will be after this presenter, okay? So perfect. Yeah. I thought you were dropping me right into it, right, right away. I've been silently sat here. Garrick. Yes, Garrick. Look at you. Garrick, are you there? Garrick, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Go for it. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. So, hi, my name is Carrick Patterson. I'm the proud inventor of Last Drop. I'm going to get right into the problem. So, the problem is personal care products, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, lotions, et cetera. Getting the contents out of these bottles when they get low is always a hassle, right? The most common method of getting the product out when they get low, when the pump stops pumping the product out, is to take the cap or the pump off, turn the bottle upside down, and let the contents drain out, Or right? Um, so the next time you use a uh, product, you take the cap or the pump off, you have a big mess, but at least you got the product out that you paid for. If you're my wife or my daughter, they throw it in the trash because it's too inconvenient to do all that, and they just open a new bottle, which upsets me because I paid for that product and I feel like I should be able to use it, right? So introduction of Last Drop, it's a dispenser that I designed. I do have a patent that was issued in March of this year. And the way it works is you take the lid off of the dispenser. There's a spike system on the bottom. You take your bottle of product and you vent the bottom of the bottle. And then you simply take your dispenser, put it over the bottle of product. And now everything goes upside down the product is going to be upside down just the way it is at the end when you're trying to get your product out. But it starts from the get-go. So now all the product gravity feeds to a pump system that's below the level of the product. That way you extract 100% of the product. There's no waste. And the patent also covers not just the method of dispensing, but it also covers um, the bottles that go in. So you can take any store-bought bottle of product and put it in the dispenser so you can use your own products that you that you like and or we can design and or license products of our own to be in less dense bottles that don't require the density that a traditional bottle needs right traditional bottles need the ability to pump and squeeze them Eric uh, you so time uh, please wrap it up Yes. So uh, my call to action is I'm, I'm trying to raise $250,000 to build the molds, et cetera, to get this product off the ground. Thank you. Uh, OK, so uh, just quick note here. Uh, uh, this is, this event is for venture capital startups, so you are not uh, a startup. I totally respect your business and you are uh, definitely a, a talented founder. Great, great product. Here we have venture capital investors. They are unlikely to invest. I'll let them ask you questions if they want to. But uh, this is uh, sure. this is for startups. Just be aware of that, and we yes. actually yes. ask startups. Okay. Uh, any any sharks interested to ask any questions here? I'm likely, but I just let you guys ask. Okay. Thank you, Garrick, for presentation. Uh, I appreciate that. Feel free to share your contacts, but uh, uh, it's it's only for startups. But thank you for presentation and good luck with your business. Thank you. Really, really appreciate. it. Um, the next person is Jay Sh uh, Shah. Jay, are you ready? Um, yes, I believe I am. Um, hello, everyone. Um, lovely to be here. Uh, thank you very much for popping on. So, right, so uh, two minutes. I'll, I'll try and keep things brief. I'm a bit of a waffler, so please uh, feel free. Um, right, so uh, jaw drop. What are we? What are we doing? So it, it all generated from a, a moment of inspiration many years ago, where I crossed paths with someone. It was a lost connection and uh there's uh wanting to to be able to turn back the clock and we launched in 2016 gained significant traction in india and the premise being that you can interact with someone in real time by dropping a pin and send out a pulse to anyone nearby you either with platonic or with a romantic um uh, context um we we yeah i think we we gather about twenty thousand users in india without any marketing in the space of six weeks Ten thousand in london again without any marketing the whole thing's bootstrapped a very very clever app um and i mothballed it through a uh, a car accident 
Anyway, um, long story short, I've uh, been working with an accelerator this year. We're bringing it back into uh, the present sense. And there's a genuine need now for more authentic human connections, not just in a romantic sense, uh, but more holistically. Mental health, I think we're all suffering from pandemic of loneliness, uh, following on from the pandemic, uh, but also just uh, just friendships and, 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 making, and, and trying to build communities and friendships in, 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 in venues, which have also been suffering. So we have a, uh, a tech and spec. We have gathered a lot of interest from various influencers around the globe. Uh, we're looking at launching in London in January next year, Austin soon after, India. Um, to put it into context, our target, our TAM is um, 32, 32 million. Um, our uh, SAM is 87 million. Our SOM is 873,000. Uh, with our projections, and these are, uh, Jay, your last time, and just please wrap it up. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, look, uh, we're going for a big market. We're undercutting uh, the likes of Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, the ones that are exploiting and uh, monetizing loneliness. We're going to, mon we're going to democratize it uh, with a unique product features, set of features which are under fast track patent, uh, something called a user safety service for proprietary models built by some of the best data scientists in the world uh, with unique data feeds coming in from every register of offenders uh, across the globe, including Reddit, so we can spot the weirdos and make sure we uh, cross-reference them against anyone that comes onto our platform Thank uh, you. to make it a really safe safe environment for everyone. Thank you, Jay. Uh, dear Sharks, do you have any questions? I do have a question. Thank you, Jay, and congrats on um, everything that you've built so far. You. Can you maybe go a little bit in, into details into how you plan to monetize that? I'd love to. Yes, absolutely. So we have a freemium model. So we'll be doing everything for free, but we time box. For example, if you go out and drop a pin to say, hey, I'm here or a pebble to say, hello, I'm alone. I'd like to meet someone. Um, we also have something called a wing woman, which I'll come to in a moment, which is a very unique feature. And everyone's raving about it. Um, we don't want those pins to stay forever, right? Because the database is going to grow. So we time box it. And if you want to buy an extension, you can. Uh, likewise, if you want to extend um you, you, you sort of your journey you can um for a price which is 9.99 flat for a month which is so much cheaper than everyone else in-app purchase for the casual user on a night out you want to spend five dollars that's all it is we're not going to upsell we're not going to hammer you like bumble 21 pounds a week just because i can just because i can at one point i had three apps running in fact i do have three apps running and i'm paying upwards of 200 pounds a month it's a mortgage payment and all for different propositions. It's a, it's, a, it's a rip. We're going to tear the market away from them. We're giving something that the world genuinely wants. And I know this, we launched it. And I've got people around the globe wanting to be part of the journey. This is big. We're going to do it. That's great. Thank you. A follow-up question for you. When you look, when you map out your, your customers and kind of the different consumers, where do you see that... They, who is biting it the most? Is it more the Gen Z, the millennials? Like how does that work? You know what? That's a really cool question. So Gen Z are really up in arms about the, the current state of play, right? The incumbent, the match group, and the group that owns Bumble. They're the cabal, and they're all making lots of money. And it's all full of ghosts and catfishing, and, and they're, they're moving away to more realistic connections. Um, so definitely Gen Z, and something that's not going to cost them a lot of money. They're not cash rich. They're not on fat money. Uh, but there's also users like myself who are a bit more mature who can see the game for what it is. And we're tired of swiping. We just can go out and meet people. Like I want to go out and meet my friends or meet new people, which I do when I travel at the airport lounge or wherever I go. Uh, more organic without paying a premium. You know, and, and that's all we want. And that's what we're going to do. It caters multiple markets. It's for everyone. And it really is inclusive there is something else which i didn't mention which i'd really like to touch upon i suffered badly with mental health and a lot of friends did during the pandemic to the point where i took a walk to the river one night with the full intention of coming back yes. i tried to contact every crisis center but they were run by volunteers on telephones and i couldn't we're going to digitize it and give them our platform free of charge the samaritans the nhs uh, mind, mankind. Jay, Jay, I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt, but it's just so many people want to want to uh, want to pitch. 
Oh, sorry. Maybe sharks have questions to you, so you can answer. Uh, any other sharks? Do you guys have questions? Are you guys in or out? Okay. Social is not a focus area for me, so I'd be out. But um, right. with anything social, that's like proof is in the pudding. I would say just like launch it, get it live. Like let's see what the uptake is, and uh, I, I think if there's like interest and it goes viral you'll definitely have investor interest oh it will we've got multiple media personalities on 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 on, on hook and on top of that we've already done it and uh, obviously i had to mothball it plus it's the back-end technology now which we're going to license and that's where the real dollars are the back end the user safety is the service suites of proprietary models and our interface and apis is um it's big thank you jay appreciate that uh, and uh, so uh, if any of the sharks would be interested to connect, we will connect you. And uh, Yuan prom uh, asked us in the beginning to leave a little earlier. So, uh, and with that, I would like to give Yuan uh, a stage to give a final words of wisdom uh, like, uh, before he goes saying a formal goodbye. So Yuan. Yeah, so, so, sorry, I had to uh, hop off a little early, but like, it's been such a pleasure today. <laughs> I really enjoyed all the pitches. Uh, I, I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if this words of wisdom, but like, I guess I agree with, uh, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of what the other sharks have shared, like today, so when you're building a product, when you're building something like, you know, brand new, like, you know, focus on something, focus on one problem that that's really, that really needs to be solved rather than thinking about oh, what, what kind of features might be good, uh, good to have. Like, it, it's, it's really important to find that like beachhead at the beginning and just, you know, focus on that and make sure you're, you're solving the problem that, that people really uh, need to solve. Um, so that that, that, would, that would be my uh, advice. But other than that, it's a really great meeting all of you again. Uh, and um, I look forward to next time. <laughs> Exciting to have you, Yuan, and uh, uh, look forward to seeing you again. Yuan is uh, also now a GGW platform. You can match with him in there. And you got, Yuan, have a great day. And thank you for being with us. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So. So the next person to present is uh, Priyash. Priyash, thank you. Thank hey you. guys, can you hear me? Yep, go for it. Awesome. Hey, this is Priyash. Um, I'm from beautiful Colorado. Uh, 20 plus years of tech experience and now co-founder and CEO at Visionify. So at Visionify, we have built a software platform to help manufacturing companies reduce workplace safety accidents by adding AI to the dumped CCTV camera network. We support four major problem areas, slip and fall detection, early fire detection, exclusion zone compliance, and vehicular accidents and near misses detection. Even in this day and age, there are 5,000 deaths and 2.6 million injuries per year in US factories alone. We have built this platform in partnership with Microsoft as they saw a gap in this area. So uh, we, we worked with them to build a roadmap for this product. We have an MVP built and we have 15 non-binding LOIs from different companies, some big logos. We are currently executing four pilots and soon and will soon generate our first dollar in recurring revenue. If we execute all the LOIs successfully, we will be unlocking $3.4 million of annual recurring revenue. We have built partnership with Microsoft. We have built partnership with one insurance company and signed one non-exclusive distributor agreement who are all bringing us their clients to us. We are seeking $1 million in convertible note to help us scale our team and execute all the LOI's interest we are seeing. This technology has huge future potential and can be leveraged in like multitude of industries to save lives. We would love you, Shark, to join us in our journey to save one life at a time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Where are you based, Priyash? I'm in I, Colorado. Sorry. I have comments, questions. Um, Priyash, I love what you're doing. This is, uh, I love this type of companies. I have spent time in the space. Uh, my father worked in the HSC space and uh, some of work workplace safety has been sort of like his, his life sort of passion and he kind of like instilled it to me. I was also an, an early investor in Intensai, which you might know, because um, I do something very similar to you. So anyway, I, I love that. My question to you is, can I can we know a bit more about 
your background, um, kind of like your your, your story itself, um, and and maybe your co-founder if if you do have some. And the second piece is around your pipeline. So you sh- you know walk us through uh, with your pipeline right now. Yeah, sure. So my background is I have done my master's in engineering from Rutgers uh, 20 years back, joined uh, Qualcomm, uh, worked there for a lot of years, met my co-founder there. He's a good friend. His name is Harsh and he's a, he was a colleague, friend and now a business partner. We both successfully ran a consulting company for three years, did a lot of computer vision based projects and then met Microsoft and Microsoft actually gave us uh, this product idea, and they told like, if you guys build this, we'll take uh, you to our customers. So that's basically the story and the background. The pipeline wise, we are focusing on two industries. One is manufacturing industry, and the other one is hotel industry. Uh, we have 15 LOIs uh, from some big names like uh, uh, Kellogg's, uh, Adani, uh, Novotel Hotel, Indorama. So they are like some big manufacturing and hotel clients. Some of them have like from 40 to 150 facilities. Our pricing model is we charge $15,000 per manufacturing facility up to 40 cameras and around $6,000 average for a a medium sized hotel. Uh, So that's our business model. Thank you. Uh, Okay, any other sharks is interested to connect? Okay. Uh, with respect to the monies that you talked about, are those uh, a recurring revenue stream or is this like a, uh, and is there a hardware component to this or is this strictly software that you've created? So it is, uh, it's software which runs on off the shelf edge device. So it's like an NVIDIA GPU device or software runs on it. And it's a recurring revenue uh, model uh, b- because we do support uh, our software. We add new models to it. We add new use cases. So it's a recurring revenue. Have you created your own computer vision models or are you using uh, third party uh, models for, for what you're doing? No, so we use the base models like YOLO uh, base models and then we have trained our own models. Probably early for us uh, just cause you're at the LOI phase but uh, I'd appreciate it if you kept in touch. Sure, thank you. Dan. Yeah, I'd, like to, I'd love to connect with you Priyash. Okay, so one shark is in. Congratulations. Then I didn't understand. Uh, keep in touch. It means that I connect you. Yeah, connect, please. Yeah, thank you. Got it. Thank you. Thank Two you Congratulations. Yeah. What about the rest? Not a fit for oh. me. Not a for me, but very uh, interesting project. Yeah, thank great. Uh, it sounds like great technology, just not a fit. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Thank you, Priyash. Uh, share your contact details and we move on. Uh, we have uh, very little time and few, lots of hands, so we, we will squeeze people, those who will be, uh, I mean, in the available time. So the next one is Scott Bradley. Scott, is Hi, Sharks. Yes, I am. Hi, Sharks. I'm the owner of Yumi Baby Tech. We're starting a seed round raise right now, looking to raise a million dollars for 20, 20% equity stake in our company. History shows the biggest returns come behind evolutions. Evolutions and safety and convenience are really important. We'll get into our evolution in a second, but first I'll share with you quickly who we are. So we're a femtech company. Um, we have granted patents in 18 countries. Our vision is to become the most innovative baby and mother care company with a purpose of saving millions of tears for parents along the parental journey by infusing technology and deep tech into our products. So how do you beat the in- in- industry leaders? You really beat them through innovation if you want to take them on. So let's look, have a look at our evolution. So one of the biggest pain points along the parental journey is feeding your baby. Currently, when a baby cries for the bottle, they wait on average over 10 minutes for that bottle to be warm properly before they're fed, but not with Yumi. Our bottles heat the milk from fridge temperature to breast milk temperature in one minute and have a press of a button on our bottles. We are the fastest and safest way in the world to warm milk. Our warming technology is precision warming technology that also protects 100% of the milk nutrients because it'll never overheat the milk. So this is the evolution of baby bottle feeding. It's going to change how people feed their babies around the world. So there you have it. We need funds. When you have something so unique, you want to tell everybody about it. In order to tell everybody, you have to advertise. And that's what we want to raise funds for. Um, Plus, we've had early traction right now from four, four big multinationals looking to purchase us. We know from history, big companies no longer create innovation, they buy it. So I think we're positioned very well for that. 
So, you know, we're looking for someone that wants to join us on our mission of saving millions of tears for babies and parents and making that parental journey easier and safer. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, the investor, I'm not sure it's a venture model or not. So you judge, uh, please ask your questions. I think it's actually probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's not an area that I invest in. We just, we just don't do like consumer, like, you know, hardware goods like this, but uh, just, just based on my own experience as a parent, uh, this is probably, there's definitely demand for this. Thank you. Scott, my, mine is more a comment rather than a question. I, I think it's a great idea. Um, your valuation is very rich. Um, if you have not had traction, you may find that to be a little bit of a hurdle. Um, what What is your secret sauce? Are you patented? Do you have anything that can protect? So we have patents granted, granted in 18 countries for design patent. Okay. The secret behind our bottle is the design. The Patented reusable warming cone actually sits, sits going on. It sits inside the nipple. Um, and because it's that point of contact just before it touches the baby's mouth, we warm the milk just at the time before they drink it. And because of that, we replicate breastfeeding. So every sip of milk from our bottles is the same temperature as breast milk. No other bottle can do that. So they warm up all their milk. And then over the course of the 20 minute feed, it declines in temperature. We heat it as they drink it. They get the same temperature of milk, which is breast milk temperature from first sip to last for entire feeding. It, it, it's a great, it's a great project. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's a little bit too much into the consumer space for me, but. Um, but you had mentioned traction. So we do have, we have done $4.4 .4 million in lifetime sales. That, that That's a good information to have when you're pitching. Yes, it's, it's, it's 120 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> and actually, when, when I say that we want to be the most innovative baby company, this is our lead bottle. So what I've done is we've identified along the parental journey all the pain points. We're going to be launching innovative products along those pain points. The next one that's coming out right now for the next 18 months is there currently there's no way to know how much milk a baby drinks from a mom's breast at a feeding. We have developed a technology that will tell you exactly to a point of an ounce how much milk the baby drinks at a feeding, and it'll track to your you, it'll track to your app on your phone. Yeah, uh, okay. thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Because we have very little time, uh, I just will ask straightforward questions to the sharks. Is any sharks interested to connect? Are you guys in? No, not not a fit for me. Okay, thank you, Scott. Please share your contact information here and the uh, great retraction great presentation uh thank you for your pitch uh oh, thanks thanks Andrew. we're moving on and we have two more startups hopefully both will make it to the end uh paul Bri paul brizek paul you ready paul how are you all right yeah 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 great great all right happy to make it so um nice yeah. to meet everybody uh, my name is Paul Brzezik. I'm an evening weekend MBA at UC Berkeley Haas. Um, I'm coming in with a, a bunch of technology, uh, technology consulting software experience. Um, I'm building a startup called Carbon Trace. Carbon Trace is carbon emissions tracking and insights as a service for enterprise. This is playing into the overall compliance rules that we see changing the landscape, including um, the Inflation Reduction App, uh, CBAM in Europe, Amazon just announced that by 2024, all of their suppliers are gonna to have to disclose their carbon emissions. And when we talk about that, we're talking about scope one, two, three. The problem with scope three is extremely hard to calculate, even if you're ready to do it. So there needs to be a lot of AI built into the solution. So we're building, um, just was accepted in a finalist at UC Berkeley STEP, which is a non-dilutive accelerator and also won a Berkeley Haas seed funding grant. So I'm currently pre-seed building a prototype um, this Gardner has estimated that carbon accounting is going to be a new accounting imperative comparable to Sarbanes Oxley in 2002. When Enron and WorldCom cheated and the IRS changed all the rules, companies were just simply not prepared for all of this accounting and reporting that was required, ended up costing the enterprise over a million bucks a year. So something similar is about to happen. We also see the effect of um, voluntary carbon offsets. The demand is about to go 100x, according to McKinsey, and with a CAGR of over 40%. So 
Carbon Trace is building at the intersection of carbon accounting, Web3, and AI technology. I have backing with UC Berkeley faculty. I'm building a team strictly with Berkeley founders, including some MBA uh, who are experts in the sustainability field. I'm a second time founder myself, was launching an iOS app called Candor that had celebrity partnerships back in 2015. So we're currently uh, seeking 500,000 in the uh, form of a safe note. So thanks for hearing me out. Please join us and help save the world and companies reduce their carbon emissions. Thank you very much. Sounds like an info project. Yes, I your questions. No question per se. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go, 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 go for it, Reese. I was gonna say, I know there's a lot of companies out there that are that are trying to work with large enterprises to uh, to address this problem. You know, what's like the really unique thing about what you're doing? So the first thing, um, this market is considered in a uh, blue ocean because it's expanding extremely quickly. Most companies simply don't care about it. We're focused on saving the enterprise money. Of course, there's great uh, carbon emissions to save the world piece, but really what we want to do is slash the cost. So when you look at these solutions such as Watershed, such as Salesforce, NetCloud Zero, those are, those are possible solutions. You can hire EY to do it, but we're talking about millions of dollars of cost. So we're going to be able to provide the same level of accuracy and over time even better because one of the uh, moats is our AI and big data um, is a very opaque space. And uh, we're one of the only companies that are using Web3 technology to disambiguify uh, the space. So we're going to encourage companies to record this data on uh, public blockchains if they want as a feature. I'm a Web3 guy. I'm a part of blockchain at Berkeley and also started a Clubhouse blockchain club. Um, and in addition, through the interface, we're going to hook up with uh, APIs to enable the purchasing of carbon credits uh, in order to go carbon neutral through SaaS. And, and, and just one, one more thing about the solution, it's a two tier. One is um, TurboTax for carbon emissions and two for large enterprises. We're gonna inter integrate directly into their ERPs through APIs to um, do the calculations automatically. Thank you. Are you guys in or out with this project? Uh, I think it's a great idea. I'm gonna be out because I feel like I couldn't really make a specific contribution uh, because I just feel like you would require a specialty investor um, with, and I think the big focus is like establishing your domain authority to be able to do this with uh, a high degree of credibility uh, versus uh, say a competitor or people just sort of like pulling numbers out of the air. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it seems like you have a system to do that, uh, but it's it's going to be, I think your biggest challenge is just establishing like domain authority that you're the the ones to go to for this. Thank you. Uh, any other sharks uh, in interested to connect? Okay. Thank you very much, Paul. Please share your contact information here in the chat. And uh, um, yeah, uh, support others. Uh, and I have one uh, question to the sharks. Uh, we have one startup left and we're a little bit like behind time. Uh, do we let this startup to pitch or you want to finish this session? Everyone in? Okay, Reese, are you okay? Go ahead and listen. Oh. Yep, I'm okay. And you, Inna, you too? Okay, perfect. All right, thank you for being so flexible. And uh, uh, the final startups for today uh, is Eric uh, Eisel. Uh, Eric, uh, are you there? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, you got two minutes, go for it. Sure, my name is Eric Eisley. I'm the CEO of Broflux. We're here to revolutionize agriculture with connectivity technology built for farmers and usher in a farmer-first approach to AI and automation. Most automation technologies in agriculture are severely outdated, and they don't serve the needs of modern farmers. We're at the center of cloud-enabled automation for greenhouse agriculture, and our product is aimed at IoT controls that save energy for greenhouses. It's installed on 400-plus farms in 16 countries. We build technology that farmers love to use, that sets up in minutes instead of months, and eliminates technicians from the field. We also reduce capital costs by orders of magnitude. We have a differentiated sales strategy that involves partnering with established equipment brands. This way, we actually don't have to go farm to farm to sell our products. So we're the preferred IoT partner for brands like GE Current and Philips. 
we have uh, major manufacturers in our vertical uh, that are approaching us for our IoT network. Uh, we're backed by two Fortune 100 companies. Uh, we're a Cleantech Open alumni and Wells Fargo IN2 company. I come from DuPont. I have 13 patents. My co-founder came from uh, Comcast. And our founding team has two exits under our belt. Uh, this week, we closed a $150,000 check in our safe round, and we're looking for a lead. Sounds fantastic. So, uh, dear Sharks, you do you have any questions? They closed $150,000 this week. I'd love to know some details about your traction. Uh, how long have you been around? How many units have you sold? Sure. We uh, started in 2017. We've shipped a little over 12,000 IoT products. Okay. And what does that represent on an annualized basis for revenue? And is it uh, purely um, a hardware play or is there some recurring model that you've built into this as well? Yeah. So uh, we're, our revenue is a little bit of under a million dollars to date. Um, our model is uh, has been uh, to sell the enabling hardware. Uh, we have SaaS subscriptions that are attached to that as well uh, that the uh, that end customers uh, pay directly to us. Um, and then our hardware model is actually one of the only in our industry that allows equipment makers to actually license the firmware from us, uh, and then we offer those cloud services uh, directly. Okay. Any more questions? Anyone interested to connect with this founder? Okay, so thank you, Eric. We appreciate that. A great presentation and congratula congratulations with the closing 150 this week. It's uh, great news. I always admire when founders uh, share this kind of news. Uh, please stay with our network uh, and uh, definitely uh, support us during next speech. And uh, uh, with that said, it's time to close the session. So thank you, Eric. Thank you. Okay, so. Uh, dear Sharks, uh, appreciate all uh, the uh, questions uh, and all your support today. And uh, that was a challenging day. So many hands, so many startups were willing to pitch. I really appreciate everyone being together with us. Um, so uh, before I let the Sharks to close the session, uh, everyone, please uh, uh, um, join our next pitch event. Uh, that will be in two weeks. On, uh, I'm sharing the link here so you can RSVP. And of course, it's very important for us that you share your feedback uh, about the event, what you like, dislike, maybe some ideas or something like that. We always listen and try to make it better if we can. But with that said, I'm going to let the uh, uh, investors to close the session with their final words of wisdom. What do you guys have on your heart and mind to share with entrepreneurs who are pitching and work today with us? Dan, would you like to start? Hey, sure. Uh, thanks, Danil. Um, thank you, um, everyone who pitched today. I uh, really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best of luck. And for anyone who didn't get a chance to pitch, uh, also the same. Uh, I think uh, just a little bit of context about the fundraising environment that we are in is useful. Uh, investors are a lot more discriminating right now. There's more startups than ever. At the same time, there's been a massive contraction in capital. And as a result of that, you've got to be really sharp with your pitches and really on point. And I would really recommend everyone to focus on numbers and metrics. Uh, we're entering a world where we don't necessarily have the capital to invest in just ambitious projects with a, a vision. Uh, it has to be backed by some evidence of traction and, and you earning revenue. Uh, if you are pre-revenue, um, Focus on the market and the validation that you managed to achieve. And if you haven't gone out and gotten validation for your product, go do that. So whether that's uh, LOIs or uh, customers that are in waiting or a number of people, you know, if you're building a social or consumer app, you know, how big of you build your email list, like some way that you are showing that you're working on a product that's going to have a lot of demand. Uh, other than that, um, when you pitch, uh, don't talk too much about features. Uh, be more about the problem that you're specifically solving with your product. And that's going to really crystallize for all the investors uh, what it is that you've done. And it answers the why, which is the really important thing. So other than that, uh, good luck to all entrepreneurs. Thank you very much, Dan. Great to have you as always. And we're moving on to Angelica. Share what you have on your heart and mind. Thank you, everybody. First of all, thank you for the organization, as always, Daniel and the team. Um, thank you to my fellow judges for the insightful questions. Um, Dan, I 
wholeheartedly agree with you and what you're saying. Um, what, what, um, what I am noticing is that entrepreneurs tend to think that fundraising is an easy journey. Fundraising is not an easy journey, but you only need a few, a few good yes. So don't get discouraged. Do what Dan was telling you about. You're going to hear a lot of no's. Try to take them all as learning opportunities. And do remember that the entrepreneurial spirit of technology and innovative startups is what makes the world go round. So keep doing what you're doing. Just get even better at it. Good luck to everybody. Thank you. Great words. Appreciate that, Angelica, as always. Ina, uh, would yeah. you like to continue? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you all so much for pitching. I think uh, it's very, very difficult to do it. So um, we don't, I certainly don't take it for granted. Um, I would freak out if I had to do two minutes to talk about my baby. So I really appreciate your time and, and being so, um, you know, really candid with your answers in the question. I think you all did a really good job. Um, I think plus one to what Dan and, and, and Angelica said, I think uh, it's certainly very competitive right now. I think it's definitely, uh, there is the, the bar is higher. So, you know, anything that can seemingly disqualify you um, will result in a no. So really be very aware of what, know your audience, be very aware of what your investors are looking for. So for instance, if someone is telling you that they want some kind of, Dan says he lacks some traction and he's doing enterprise deals. So if you know that you're really early, maybe you can go and pitch to him, but maybe, um, you know, save yourself some time and actually focus on investors who will be actually, who are really sort of um, a good fit for you. So that's number one. The second piece is when you sort of like pitch, particularly when you're so sort of pre-seed or to seed stage, um, you know, it's very important that you talk about, you know, the product, of course, that we, 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 we appreciate that you love your solution, but it's very easy to fall in love with the solution, but understand that your probably will change, um, your, your product will change down the line. So I think it's more important for you to really try and convey us what, how, how you can grow, how, how can this be big? Because ultimately, as a VC, of course, I want to help you, but I also want to generate some return because that's why I'm in this business. And I really want to understand how big of a market it is. So I'm not talking about your time, but really how big is your obtainable market and how can you continue to stretch it as you go? And so how do you go from that, like I said, 1 million, 10 million, 50 and so on and so forth. I think that's one piece where I see a lot of founders not being able to articulate that and having a vision around that. And so. Um, and then the last piece is that through the fundraising process about what you want and what actually you need from the other, your, the other party. And also what maybe, um, you know, take the feedback. So the kind of questions that you've been asked, maybe it means that that, that point wasn't really clear. So take that into consideration as data points to just improve your pitch, improve your product and impro improve your company that line. Fantastic feedback. So detailed, really appreciate that. and. Uh, I'd be so super happy and grateful if you join us again. Uh, it's so valuable. Thank you, Ina, uh, for being with us. Uh, Riz, uh, uh, please uh, uh, be next, and you will be the, the final person who close in the global session today. No pressure on you. <laughs> no pressure at all. Well, um, it's pretty hard. I mean, I think my fellow judges, who I, it's really been a privilege to uh, sit next to you virtually today. Uh, it's pretty hard to uh, say much more than the, the great advice you, you've uh, all given. But what I, I would just really um, emphasize is you've got the guidelines here on how you know how to handle two minutes, and two minutes is really really hard. I get it, uh, and I admire the, you know all of you who take a crack at it. But um, you know I think it's really important when you're thinking about in that first like 15 or 20 seconds, you have to be crystal clear on what your solution is. And then I think you've got to, as, as my fellow judges have said, really focus on who's your target market, how big, what kind of traction you have, and what the revenue is and the potential. And the other thing I always uh, think is important, if there are comp competitors out there, don't make me dig them up. So talk about competition as well. I think it's, uh, it's really important to show that you really understand the market you're going after. But with that, I think great job by all today and I've uh, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much, Reese. I'm so excited to have you again with us and look forward to see you again too. Well, with that said, uh, it's time to close the session. Uh, GoGo -Go World will be uh, participating uh, Tech Crunch in September. So if you want to meet me in person and some of the potential sharks uh, in person, 
let's meet in San Francisco at TechCrunch. Uh, that would be fantastic. And uh, if you didn't pitch this time, uh, reach out to my team at info at goglobal.org. We were sharing this email many times in here. Uh, and we'll let you pitch next time. We uh, try to give the opportunity to everyone. And if you are a subscribed member at Go Global World, we, of course, will be pitching first. Well, with that said, good luck, everyone. Have a great weekend. It was so exciting. We, we nailed it. And please uh, shout out in social media and we'll see you in two weeks. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.